All right, hello everyone. I just prayed before I hit record, and I don't really know where to begin. I've asked the Lord to fill my mouth with His with His words. <clears throat> um, this is a warning, okay? And I don't even know what I'm going to title this. I'm going to have to ask God how to title this, and I suppose I need to be careful. Yes, Holy Spirit, I ask in the name of Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth, will you please remind me and prevent me from saying any key words, Lord, that could prompt getting this video deleted or removed or taken down. <clears throat> Will you please give me your creativity, Father God, Yahweh, Yeshua, Holy Spirit, as to how to phrase things in this video, Lord. I ask for this in the name of Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth. So, um, what triggered me asking God permission to do this video is uh, there's a channel called the Poplar Report and I think every now and then I'll share some of his videos on the community page um, and yes please disregard my appearance I know I'm not looking the best I haven't showered yet today and um, it's hot where I am so I've got the ACs going but not too much <clears throat> anyway I digress um, So I'm piggybacking off of something he just shared on his channel, and <clears throat> it actually ties into something else that's been on my heart to address again. So wh where do I begin, Lord? I don't even know how to get, like categorize this. I'm hearing the word insurance. I think that's a good way to start off. So let me just start off by referencing some scripture, okay? Test everything, hold fast to what is good. That is your responsibility. Your free will decisions are your responsibility. They're not my responsibility. They're not anyone else's not anyone else's responsibility, including God. It, God is not responsible for your free will decisions. Only you are. Okay? So this is not any kind of legal advice. This is not any kind of financial advice. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a doctor. I'm an apostle, which includes all five of the offices mentioned in the book of Ephesians. I am a mouthpiece for God. This is not, thus says the Lord. This is just me warning you, making you aware of what's going on and what is coming, what is, in my opinion, probably coming. That's all this is. And what you do with it is your responsibility. So, we know in scripture that it says at some point, those who do not take the mark will not be able to buy or sell. They will not be able to participate in modern day society, modern day life, so to speak. Okay? We know this. This is established in scripture. This is a prophecy from the Logos Word of God. But how exactly... Is that going to happen? What does that look like? Well, I believe that we're starting to see it. It's starting to be revealed. <clears throat> so, hmm, where, where, Holy Spirit, where do I begin? All right, yeah, I, I kind of like to do things chronologically. So, years ago on this channel, the Lord gave me a word of warning, a word of wisdom, that I shared on this channel, and it was about auto insurance um, apps regarding people's mobile phones. And what he told me to say was, don't do it. Don't have the app on your phone. And now, he has revealed to me just recently, maybe the last week or two, or three, just recently, he's revealed to me why this is, like the past month sometime, because modern day automobiles are quote unquote smart, right? They're connected to the internet and whether you realize it or not, they have SIM cards just like a mobile phone does. And I'm sure you've heard of what they're calling the internet of things, okay? This is how Satan is infiltrating all of God's creation and it's promoted 
because, oh, it's convenient. It's convenient. It enables you to be lazy in some new way, right? And so these modern, smart automobiles, you can connect your phone through Bluetooth. But what you're not realizing is that your car and your phone are communicating and swapping information. Okay, years ago, I know Progressive was doing it. I, I assume other car insurance companies, auto insurance companies were doing it. But they would give you this option that you could get some device sent to you and install this device, this physical tangible device in your automobile and it would monitor your driving so that you could get discounts. But re really, it was the flip of that. It was so that it could monitor when you speed, when you do, you know, hard brake stops, all, all the bad stuff, okay? <clears throat> and then people want to know why their car insurance would increase, okay? But now, people's car insurance, auto insurance, is increasing because you're connecting your phone to your car and your car is getting all the information off your phone and your phone is getting all the information off your car, okay? And so you're connecting your car and all your driving habits and yada, yada, yada with your phone that has the auto insurance app, okay? Are you connecting all this? Okay, and that's why car insurance, that's why auto insurance is going up for a lot of people. Now, yes, okay, let me be clear. Yes, there's multiple factors to what's going on regarding the cost of living, inflation, etc., etc. okay? I'm not saying that that's 100% the only reason. I'm saying it's one factor. It's one contributing factor, okay? So I wanted to address that. I've been wanting to address that, and God said, not yet, not yet, you know, but now I can kind of squeeze that into this video. But that's not even the, the main point of this video, okay? The main point of this video. <coughs> so, something else that happened recently. Recently, I went to go get my driver's license in the state that I'm currently in. And as you can see, I'm not wearing glasses anymore. Now, granted, I've been wearing glasses since I was literally two years old, okay? There's pictures of little April wearing tiny little glasses, okay? I've had three surgeries on my eyes in my life. And this past July, the Lord told me, get rid of the glasses, okay? And I've been going through my own deliverance process. <clears throat> and hopefully here soon, you know, my crooked eye that I've had three surgeries on will hopefully become straight. I, be I, I believe I've been delivered of spirits of amblyopia, which is a subordinate type of spirit to the strongman spirit of infirmity. I'm still waiting to be delivered of more spirits of infirmity. The, the strongman can do everything that all the subordinates could do, can do. So anyway, I digress. So I go in and of course they have their basic little vision exam and I passed it. But yet, the worker still put down that I wear corrective lenses. Even though I'm not wearing any glasses. And of course, he asked me, you know, well, have you in the past or whatever? And I said, yes. And I said, but I don't wear them anymore. And he said, is that because you had surgery? I said, yes, it is because I had surgery. <clears throat> or no, excuse me. Let me, let me correct myself. I said, he asked if I've ever had eye surgery, and I said, yes, I have had eye surgery. I'm very, I'm very careful not to lie, okay? <clears throat> he still put on my driver's license that I wear corrective lenses, which honestly really aggravates me. It pisses me off, because no, I don't wear them anymore. But now, the next time I go, I'm going to have to be, you know, they're, they're, they're going to pay attention to me regarding my eyes still if I ever have to get a new driver's license in a new state again. <clears throat> Which with the way I've been living almost three years now is, you know, not unprobable. Not necessarily unlikely. <clears throat> now, let me get to the, the brunt of this video. So I was just listening to a video by the Poplar Report channel. Now what he's been doing for a while now on his channel is he shares 
reports from his subscribers of what's going on, whether that's a food shortage, what have you, okay? Well, he shared, I, and I believe this story comes from the state of Utah here in the USA. I think that's what he said. Um, I will link the video in the description box below for you. It's within the first, give or take, five minutes or so of the video. <clears throat> but what happened, the story that was reported, that was shared, is that someone who has health you know, insurance, was at the doctor, and the doctor recommended a CPAP machine. And the doctor said, well, you really don't need it, but it's good to have just in case, and your insurance will cover it anyway. And the guy really didn't want to, and he resisted it, but eventually he gave in, and he went ahead and got the machine, etc., etc., but he really hasn't been using it. So he goes to get his driver's license at motor vehicle, at the motor vehicle office, and somehow, somehow, the motor vehicle office knew that he had such machine and that he really hadn't been using it, and they denied him his driver's license because he wasn't using the machine. Just let that sink in for a moment, okay? How, why, does the motor vehicle office even know the machine he does or does not have at home regarding, you know, <clears throat> health matters? I'm trying to phrase my, my, my words here with wisdom, trying. <clears throat> So, just like how the auto insurance is now spying on you through the app, on your phone, that you're connecting with your car through Bluetooth, somehow, some way, Motor Vehicle, which is an entity of the government, right? Motor Vehicle Office is now somehow communicating with health insurance companies. And health insurance companies are apparently, and, and see, and yes, let's, let's break this down even more. First of all, how does the health insurance company know whether or not this man was using the machine or not? It must be, I, I, I would not be surprised if this machine is a smart machine, if it's somehow connected to the internet. Let me also throw in that recently, in the last, I don't know, couple months, I came across, I'm, I'm sure you've seen the commercials here on, on YouTube, there is a new type of, I don't know what you want to call it, garbage can. It's called the mill, okay? And I was actually interested in it because the advertisement doesn't tell you that it's smart. It just talks about how, oh, it's going to, you know, decompose all your, your, your food waste and this, that, and the other. And da, 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 da. I'm, I think I'm already saying keywords, but whatever. So I think I emailed them to inquire something about it. Or that or I went and researched it online or, or whatever. But anyway, this, this garbage can, it's smart. It connects to the internet. And so I ended up being in communication with the people of this mill product and I said why why would I want or need my garbage connected to the internet I said the people who are I mean not all of them but I said a, a, a good portion of the people who are going to be interested in this product that are interested in having you know compost that because it, it was it was that type of product, it, where, where it's like, it's going to decompose your food so that you can have compost and this, that, and the other, and da 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 I said, a lot of that, that demographic, that group of people, they're trying to disconnect from the beast system. They're trying to disconnect from having everything tracked and traced and everything else. I said, so, I, I, I don't really see this product doing too well, you know? 
<clears throat> why would you want your garbage connected to the internet? Because they want to track and trace your garbage. Okay? But let's go back to this whole thing with motor vehicle. Okay? So if this man... <laughs> I, I, I just can't believe it. Just... I intellectually can, but my heart is just like in shock, okay? So somehow the, the, his health insurance knew is somehow monitoring how often, how frequently, how much he is or isn't using this machine. And then they are reporting that to the motor vehicle office. And the motor vehicle office is now saying, oh, sorry, we're not going to give you your driver's license now because you haven't used the machine or you haven't used it enough or whatever. <clears throat> now, let's think a little forward here, right? Let's be prudent. Let's think into the future about future repercussions, future consequences, cause and effect, okay? What does the Bible say? That if you don't take the mark, you won't be able to buy or sell. You won't be able to function in modern day society. You won't be able to participate. The Internet of Things. So this tells me it would make sense to me. It does make sense to me that at some point if you're not in the system somehow some way as taking as having taken the mark you're going to be denied it would make sense to me that you'll probably be denied your driver's license whatever else which would then give them an excuse, so, okay, if you can no longer get your driver's license, if you can no longer, you know, get, if, if, if you're no longer permitted to jump through all the hoops, that gives them more and more excuse to do what? To take action against you, to fine you financially, to arrest you, throw you in prison, jail, And then once you're in their custody, if you're in jail, if you're in prison, they can physically hold you down and force something upon you, can't they? And doesn't it say in scripture, all, that word all is there. It says he will force all to take, to receive the mark. The question is, is you know, is that willingly is that willing or is it forced upon you physically god's not going to hold it against you if it's forced upon you against your will and this is why i think it was years ago on this channel i actually led everyone in one of my videos to you know out loud declare right now in the name of yeshua the christ of nazareth that you refuse the mark this way, all of heaven and hell and earth, all of creation is your witness. And it's not your will. Before anything happens. <clears throat> Holy Spirit, is there anything I'm forgetting? Is there anything else you want me to say? Hmm. Yes, right. So that's something else that I have been watching. So I've been listening to a lot of, yes, economic, financial type videos um, or stuff that, you know, everything is interrelated. So I've been listening to a lot of videos that <clears throat> are either particularly focused on that or something that's related that ties into the finance or, you know, whatever. Because, it, it, I mean, this is where we're at. <clears throat> we hit the apotheosis of the third seal in September of 2023. Okay, but one of the videos I was listening to recently, <clears throat> there was two different people who said that they have decided to be done with insurance regarding, you know, health. 
I'm trying to be creative how I phrase this, okay? <clears throat> a lot of people are opting out of that, especially as the cost of living becomes more and more expensive. And I've also been reading in the comments um, that people are starting to also opt out of insurance regarding, you know, owning a home. And see, this is where <laughs> what I'm hearing is that phrase, the rubber hits the road. Um, more and more, we're going to be faced with decisions that we have to make that we are responsible for, uh, whether we're going to partake, participate in something or not, whether that be the mark itself, whether that be some kind of insurance, whatever, whatever, okay? And that is a discussion that you need to have with Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth. I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm not responsible for your free will decisions. But this is where things are at. This is where things are heading. There's pros and cons to everything. In this fallen world, back when I was at community college and I was taking microeconomics, that was what my... my there was one thing that my professor said that I believe is true in this fallen world is that there's a trade-off for everything. There's a trade-off for everything. There's pros and cons to everything, you know? Um, and bottom line, what the Lord, you know, I just came on here earlier today at like, what, two o'clock in the morning, one o'clock in the morning this morning, and I shared this prophetic word regarding Firmicius. That was the title of it. And the Lord was really expressing himself. Yeshua was really expressing how heartbroken and fed up he is with how people who call themselves by his name are not relying on him. They are not depending on him. They are not intimating with him. They are not trusting him. Father God Yahweh is your provider and your protector, your defender. We know from scripture that he goes ahead of us and fights our battles. But if you don't even afford him the opportunity to fight your battle for you, you've basically benched God. Thank you, Lord, for the words. That's brilliant. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Are you benching God? <laughs> Are you? That's a discussion that you need to have with Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth. Are you trusting him or are you benching him? which means you're not walking by faith. You're living in fear because fear is the absence of faith. Faith is the absence of fear. You're living in doubt. You're partnering with spirits of doubt, etc., etc. If there is anyone that is trustworthy, it's God. And what I've learned really is the only one who is trustworthy is God. <clears throat> Lord, do you want me to reference that scripture? Okay, I'm being reminded right now of the scripture that says, you know, if, if any of you is, uh, you know, sick, to go to the elders and let them lay hands on you and pray over you, okay? Nowhere in scripture, hmm, let me just stop myself right there. What do you want me to say, Lord? Regarding our physical well-being, there's two routes, there's two approaches, okay? Yes, you can approach things in the natural. There's lots of um, organic remedies, okay? But even better than that is deliverance, okay? Because everything, or at least most things, have a spiritual root, okay? Okay? Our struggle, yes, Holy Spirit, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, powers, rulers, and hosts, the four ranks of evil spirits, okay? You need deliverance. Every single one of you out there, you need deliverance. This is what the Lord has taught me, and I'm going to be teaching on that more later this year, more in depth, way, way, way more in depth. You need deliverance. You need to pursue your deliverance. And the first level of deliverance, again, you can do that by simply 
You can execute that. You can accomplish that. You can achieve that by simply doing a 72-hour water fast. And I know it's difficult, but yes, that's something else that God wants me to emphasize is, you know, part of persevering. If you go and you read scripture, if you know the word of God, how many times does Yeshua say, persevere, 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 be brave and courageous, persevere. I am with you till the end of the age. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your words, Lord. Thank you for reminding me, Holy Spirit, as I am recording this video. He who perseveres till the end. We'll get the crown of life. Am I quoting that correctly? I'm paraphrasing, but this is, this is what scripture says, okay? Persevere. I just shared on the community page a little short video where someone was explaining how when Christ was on the crucifix, the pain that he went through, like he had, just in order to breathe, he had to push himself up to inhale and exhale. And he had to go from one excruciating source of pain to another excruciating source of pain. The movie, The Passion of the Christ, explains all this, okay? He persevered through that. Have you ever had a migraine? Have you ever been in, any, been in any kind of pain that just seems so unbearable? I don't think any of us can even imagine what it's like to be crucified, okay? He persevered through that physical pain. Please appreciate that. Please stop and pause and appreciate what the Lord did for us. He persevered through that. And part of you picking up your cross and following him Ken, and here for our generation, I believe at some point, to one extent or another, will include persevering through physical pain. Whether that's a headache, whether that's a migraine, whether that's whatever. Yes, Holy Spirit. Okay. Yes. Let's go to the book of Hebrews. I wasn't even planning on covering this, but this is what Holy Spirit is prompting me to do. Hebrews, that's... Romans comes first, and then later on is Hebrews. It's in Hebrews, I know that. Let me read you this passage. Let me remind you. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Hebrews chapter 11. We can pick up in verse 35. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, not in the sense that we're talking about in terms of getting delivered of evil spirits, but delivered from what people were doing to them in the natural, okay? Because once you get delivered completely in the spirit, all that can be done to you is in the natural, okay? That they might obtain a better resurrection. Still others had trial of mockings and scourgings, yes, and of chains and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn in two. Just stop right there. If you don't know this scripture or you forgot about it, let's just stop right there. Let's just underline that. Let me get my pen. Sawn in two. Someone literally taking a saw to their body, physically, tangibly, okay? You want to talk about persevering through physical pain? We're tempted, we're slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented, of whom the world was not worthy, just like the world was not worthy of Yeshua. They wandered in deserts and mountains, in dens and caves of the earth. Even King David, for a while, was in the caves, he was in the forests, okay? All, excuse me, and all these, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. God having, providing, God having provided something better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. They did not receive the promise, okay? We love to tickle our ears in the Christian community, especially with all these prophetic words on YouTube about the promise, the promise of a kingdom spouse, the promise of prosperity, the promise of this, da-da-da. 
It says it right here. They that all these people who were they that this world was not worthy of went through all these horrible things, physical pain, excruciating, unimaginable physical pain, and they never received these promises. Now we could speculate, you know, did someone do witchcraft on them? That's a possibility, okay? But the point is is that there's no guarantee of necessary victory in the natural in this lifetime in this world, but there is spiritual victory in Christ. Okay? That is the only guarantee. And you're only guaranteed that if you walk the walk. Okay? I've gotten sort of off topic here, but it's all tied in. Holy Spirit, I ask in the name of Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth, will you please get me back on track? Help me to tie all this together, Lord. Give me the words. It may come to a point where you may be forced. You, you may be at a fork in the road where you got to make certain decisions as to what you're going to participate in anymore, what you're going to partake in anymore, what you're going to pay for anymore. And insurance of different sorts, of different types, could be one of those decisions. I'm trying to be careful with how I phrase things here, okay? That's between That decision is something you should be discussing with Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth. Because ultimately, your Savior is not any kind of insurance that you pay for here in the natural. The only real in insurance is your salvation in Christ. Yes, Lord. Let's go. Let's go find the scriptures I was referencing earlier. Let's go to the book of Revelation. Where, where Yeshua addresses the seven churches. I did that teaching on the seven churches years ago. Maybe I'll link that in, in the description box below in case you have forgotten it. You want to refresh yourself on it or if you're new to the channel or if you just never saw it. Okay. But you should go read where Yeshua addresses the seven churches. These are seven postures of heart. These are seven statuses as to where people stand with God. And only two of these out of the seven are the people who go to heaven. And that is Smyrna and Philadelphia. That is it. The rest do not go to heaven. Let's see here. So at the end of the first church that he addresses, the loveless church, Ephesus. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. To he who overcomes. That means if they repent, if they stop being apostate, because that's what this church of Ephesus is. This is people who went apostate. Okay, that this is the priesthood who went apostate. If they repent, then they will overcome and they will eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. The next church, the persecuted church, the martyrs. Okay, this is Smyrna. He says, Be faithful until death, and I will give you the crown of life. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. The third church, the compromising church. This is... Um, Got what I have written here in my little chicken scratches, the Catholics, and so on and so forth. Again, go to my teaching. I'll, I'll link it below. It's more thorough. Okay? To him who overcomes, repents, I will give some of the hidden manna to eat, and I will give him a white stone, and on the stone a new name written, which no one knows except him who receives it. The next church, the corrupt church, the infiltrated Protestant church. And to he who overcomes, if they repent, to he who overcomes and keeps my works until the end, to him I will give power over the nations, and I also have received from my Father, and I will give him the morning star. The next church, the apostle, excuse me, the dead church, oh, excuse me, excuse me, Ephesus was just apostate in general, The de this church is the apostate officers, okay, I may need to clarify that with God a little bit more. Let's see what he says here at the end of this. Again, if they repent, verse 5, He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life, which means that 
And if they don't repent, their names will be blotted out of the book of life. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Moving on. The next church, the faithful church, the church of Philadelphia. Because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world to test who dwell on the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast that you, that hold fast what you have, that no one may take your crown. He who overcomes will make, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God, and I will write on him my new name. I may need to redo that teaching, actually, on the seven churches, because I think I'm getting revelation. I'm getting some clarifying revelation. I think... I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna definitely have to go over this with God again, because I I can definitely see how some of this applies to the two witnesses. That's for darn sure. The last church, the lukewarm church, the church of Laodicea. Those who are led by their mind, their carnal mind, their intellect. They think they know it all. They're very religious in a sense. Um, or not. They're not religious, but they partner with spirits of religiosity. Okay. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. But that's if they repent, if they overcome, okay? How many times? <laughs> Pretty much in every one of these. Overcome, 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 overcome. Yeshua told us, persevere, overcome. Pick up your cross and follow me. Mm, yes. Let's go back to, what is it, Matthew? Hold on. Let me see if I can find it here without taking up too much time flipping pages. Where does Yeshua say that? To pick up at your cross and follow me. He says if you if you don't, you can't be his disciple. Oh, where is that? Off the top of my head. Pick up your cross and follow me. And if you don't forsake all others, you cannot be my disciple. That's pretty much what he said. Where is it, Holy Spirit? Is it in Matthew or is it one of the other Gospels? I, I forget. It may be one of the other Gospels. But anyway, that that's what Christ said. I'm paraphrasing, but that, that's what he said. Let's see if I can find it. Picking up your cross and following him means being willing to go through physical pain. Okay? And that's what the Lord was really emphasizing in the last prophetic word he gave me. I'm not going to sit here and waste your time watching me flip through pages. But, okay, you need to be willing. Like, have you truly made up your mind and your heart? That if you're sawn in two, like it says in Hebrews, or you're nailed to a cross, or whatever, that you're going to stick with Christ, okay? Is he truly your God? Your God is whatever is priority to you, whatever comes first. There we go. The lighting is just ridiculous. Let me tie this back in, okay? Regarding insurance. Is it... Is it worth it? That's the question that you and Yeshua have to discuss and come up with an answer to. Is it worth it? There is no real, true insurance. There is no guarantee. The only true insurance is the assurance of salvation, and that's if you are truly repenting of your sin, are truly repenting of your idolatry. Pharmacias is idolatry. If you are pursuing your deliverance to consecrate yourself so that you are conveyed into the kingdom and then staying humble so that you can remain in Christ, remain in the kingdom, okay? If you're doing all that, if you've got check, check, check on all those, blo all those blocks and you stay that way, 
That is your insurance. That is your assurance. Satan is closing in on us, church. It says it in scripture that at some point, Satan is, you know, his his messenger, his people, is going to overcome the saints in the natural. Okay, how many times did Yeshua tell us, overcome, 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 but yet in another place it says that Satan's going to overcome us, okay? But there's, there, there, we're talking about different levels, okay? We are body, soul, and spirit. You can't be overcome by Satan unless you choose to be. Thank you, Lord, for the words. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Can you be overcome on a body level in the natural? Yeah. Yeah, you could. I just explained how. But you can only be overcome in the spirit by your free will decision. And that's ultimately all that matters. And that's what I want to drive home to you. That's the spiritual message here, okay? Is that we are body, soul, spirit. And the only way that you can be overcome on a spirit level is if you choose to be. And that is a free will decision that you will be held accountable for on Judgment Day. And that is ultimately the only level that really matters. Yes, right now, if you can keep Satan off your back, so to speak, keep the beast system off your back by, you know, minding your P's and Q's and go get your driver's license and jump through the hoops and whatever, you know, where, where, where you're not disobeying God. Okay, but at some point, Satan is making it so that it's he's slowly encroaching upon us so that at some point, we're not even going to be able to do that. Because they're tracking and tracing everything, the, the control is, is closing in on us. The oppression, the control, okay? And you're going to have to make decisions. And that's where it's going to be proven. That's where you are going to be proven as to who is your God. Who is your God? Is it Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth? Or is it anything else, which is really Satan? The only level that really matters is the spirit level. So if you have to end up someday not being permitted to get a driver's license, and then you drive because you got to do whatever God's telling you to do, and you get caught, and you get arrested, and you get thrown in jail, and then someone holds you down and, you know, forces the mark upon you or whatever, okay, so maybe Satan, maybe he overcame you on, on a body level in the natural, but he can't overcome you in the spirit unless you choose him over God. It's all about your free will. Or is there anything else you want me to say? Alright, so in the description box below, I'll put the video of the Poplar Report. Like I said, it's, it's give or take within like the first five minutes of that video. Um, if God wants me to, I will put the video of the teaching of the seven churches. I'm going to ask God if I need to clarify that and redo that or not. Um, and whatever scripture God may tell me to put below and whatever else God may tell me to put below in the, in the description box for you. So, um, just be aware, church, okay? Like I said, I, I believe we are less than a year out right now. Today is May 19th, 2024. I believe we are less than a year out from the Great Tribulation commencing. Hmm, right. That was something else I want to mention on video. And if you doubt me on that, there is something called, what is it called, Holy Spirit? Bank Term Funding Program? I think that's what it's called. Bank Term Funding Program. It expires March 11th, 2025, which is about a year, excuse me, a month, a month before Passover of 2025, which is April 12th, okay? So, yes, right now we've got, we, we've had, and, and, and we, we've had, and we have banks, uh, whatever word you want to use, collapsing, closing down, being bought out, yet, uh, being consolidated, and so on and so forth, and that will continue, 
But I believe we are going to see a major, 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 whatever you want to call it. Well, we could just say change. A major economic change in the macro regarding banks come March 11th, 2025, which is about one month prior to Passover. And if you think that that is not going to be a contributing factor to the commencement of the Great Tribulation, I don't know what to tell you. So, I bless you all in the name of Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth.